Okay, I want to show you guys a quick little tutorial on how to I grow uh, Nepenthe seeds and the types of soil mixes that I use because I get a lot of questions about what do I grow my plants in and uh, the seed part is specifically for my buddy uh, Plants and Things who was asking about Nepenthe seeds. Now, um, I got this little paper here and it's got a little packet of Nepenthe seeds in it. I'm gonna open it up, show you what these look like. They're really tiny. Depending on the species, they can be longer than this or, or shorter. Now, if you see this one right here, this is what a typical Nepenthe seed looks like. They have these two long things, which are just filaments, and the fat part in the center, that's the little seed. That's the, where the embryo is, and that's what's gonna sprout. Now, Nepenthes are actually difficult to grow from seeds and you have to have a lot of patience and you have to have fresh seed. That's the important thing. Make sure you get fresh seed. It shouldn't be older than a month. Two months is okay, but anything older than that and they go bad. And don't refrigerate your seeds and store them because that will kill the babies inside, the, uh, the little embryos. Even if it's a highland plant that wants cold weather later on, you don't want to store these in the fridge. All right, so what I do is I get clear tubs, like this one, or something like this that I got from the, uh, this was uh, noodles from a Chinese restaurant to go box. And this was a, a soup container from Ruby Tuesdays for uh, cheese soup. And I use milled long fiber sphagnum moss. Now this is different from regular sphagnum moss, so I'll show you that. Uh, this is uh, regular sphagnum moss. You can get this at uh, Lowe's in the orchid section. And you can see how it's these long filaments of uh, dried mosses. And sometimes these have sticks in them. But this one I'll open it up. You see inside, it's got no uh, no branches. What's happened is they've, they've milled this, so they took out all the middle parts and all the sticks, and it's just the little leaves. And this is really fine, and this is what you want, because what's important when you put Nepenthe seeds for sprouting is you want them to have contact with the soil media that you're using. Now I have right here. Now these actually have seeds in them. When you open it up, you can see all the condensation. This is good because this is going to give the, the seeds uh, the 100% humidity in here. And the clear dome lets light in. I put these under a grow light. Do not put these outside in the sun. You will cook your plants and kill everything. And you can see all the little seeds in there. Um, what I do is I take the uh, sphagnum moss and I put it in first. I put water in it and moisten it up and then I stick it in the microwave for a few seconds to make it hot to kill any uh, pathogens and diseases that might be in the moss. And once it cools off, the keyword is cooled off, then I just put the seeds on top, try to get them to separate, and then I spray them with distilled water bottle. That way they're making contact with the surface of the moss. And then I cover them up because you want them to stay moist. I do lift the lids up maybe every two or three days to get them to have uh, fresh air in them. And really important is down here on the side, I have the date. And that's really important because uh, these take a long time to sprout. You're looking at a minimum of three months before anything starts to come up with Nepenthes. Minimum. Some can take longer than that, months to even a year, so have patience. And that's pretty much what I do for sprouting seeds. Oh, one last thing. Um, I use these straws and cut them and put them inside. This one's not the right length. Uh, you can put it long ways and put all the moss and then separate out different types of seeds and put little labels on the side and the date. That way you know what type of seeds you're growing. Very important that you have 
labels so you know what you're getting and not mixing up your seeds. Once you do get the plants to sprout, you'd like to know what you have. <laughs> okay, uh, these are some plants that I have grown from seed. These are really young uh, Nepenthes truncatus. I'm hoping one day they'll be huge giants. And then this is um, a Maxima, a green Maxima that I also grew from a seed. And these guys, I think, are about maybe nine months old. So they're still little babies. They're much smaller when they first sprout out. I don't have a, a picture or one to show that's newly sprouted. But uh, as you can see, it does work. It, it is difficult. Success rate with seeds uh, can be very low. If you get, say, I've planted a hundred seeds before because that's uh, like about what comes in two pods and had a turnout of about 10 seedlings sprout. Not, not survive, just sprout. So that's a 10% success rate or less. So yeah, you gotta not get disheartened by it and you have to have a lot of patience. Okay, next I'm gonna show you the different types of soils that I use. And uh, there's a few ingredients you can get. I use, uh, you can get orchid bark, which you can get at Lowe's. Perlite, sphagnum peat moss. Now this is different from uh, the regular sphagnum. This is peat, which is what the plants and the bogs have decayed. The moss is decayed down from being compacted. And then the long fiber sphagnum, which I used. And depending on what kind of nepenthes I have, I use one of three mixes. This is what works well for me. Now this here, is a highland, a dry, airy highland mix. I use this on plants like Nepenthes hamata or Nepenthes truncata, which likes it a little bit on the dry side. The, uh, the sphagnum moss, these fibers, help retain the moisture. The key for any kind of Nepenthes soil mix is to have something that's fast draining, and the uh, orchid bark helps it to drain quickly, and so does the perlite but moisture retaining. Kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but it does work. And this drains very, very quickly, but retains enough moisture for the plant. And this is a mix of one part sphagnum moss, one part perlite, one part orchid bark, and half a part of peat. Now, this one here is a totally different, different mix. This is a lowland mix. And I don't have any orchid bark. Uh, you can put some in there, but if you'll notice, there's a lot more soil. That's the peat. And this one is one part sphagnum, one part perlite, and two parts peat. The peat makes it a little heavier, retains more moisture, and is better for plants that are growing out in high heat and high humidity. Now, I'm, I hear a lot of people, when you're beginners, you're starting off saying, well, what's a part? I have a cup, but I don't know, or I have a teaspoon. What is a part? Well, a part is any measurement that you want to use. Just stick to whatever measurement you, you choose. For me, I like to use these little yogurt cups. These are six ounces. So one part for me is one of these cups. And I'm going to make what I call my all-purpose general mix for intermediates, or if you're not sure what it is, um, you can, you can use this mix. So what I do is I just make it an all around one, one, one part. So I measure out one part of peat. One part of perlite. This makes it, helps make it airy. And one part of sphagnum peat moss and the, the I'm sorry not not peat moss or sphagnum moss regular long fiber sphagnum moss and this one I kind of cheat a little bit it's not going to be a part because this is what retains the moisture so I think it's really important to have it in there and I just stuff it I'm like oh that's that's not full it needs to be stuffed a little bit more oh that fill in that's good until I just can't push it that to me is one part of long fiber sphagnum moss. 
And then you just mix it all together. And right when I'm getting ready to put it in, I'll, I'll spray this so it's moist. That way the sphagnum isn't floating to the surface and it's more like the other ones were more uh, evenly spread out. So one part sphagnum moss, one part perlite, and one part uh, peat. It's like a general purpose. You can use this for like uh, Nepenthes ventrata, uh, Nepenthes miranda, which can handle a wide variety of conditions. All right, hopefully this has answered some questions and helped you out. This is how I do my Nepenthes. Des signing off.